Hello friends, it's Lionheart here, and Reveal Season is finally upon us. While I've loved the variety and the versatility in Gwent in the last few months, it's fair to say I am ready for something new. Day one of Reveal Season has come and gone, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the Northern Realms cards. This is the image that is being touted for the new expansion. It is called Claw and Dagger. Make of that what you will. And we're starting off with those Northern Realms cards from today. Some really interesting reveals. Not my personal favorite set of archetypes. I've had a couple of issues with Northern Realms in the more recent past in terms of their archetypes. I'm curious to see what you all think of the. But you know what? Let's not waste any time. And here is our first. It is the Redanian Agent. Now you're going to be looking at this card and you're going to be thinking, wait a minute. Isn't that Dandelion for four provisions? A slightly worse version? Well, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is Dandelion. It's a discounted Yaskia. Four for four, Redanian Agent. It's a human veiled card. Order, boost a unit in your deck by one, cooldown two. Now, it is super slow tempo, but it is very, very good value because there's a couple of different things you're going to want to do with this, and I think it will find a place not just in the overall archetype that these new cards will fit, which, as you're probably working out from the first card, is basically deck buff, hand buff. We've seen similar kind of archetypes in Northern Realms in the last few months with the... Uh, Melitaly, Mutagenerator, Erland shoot list that was going around for a while. I think I have a YouTube video on that somewhere. Go and have a look. Anyway, um, and this will is the kind of card that would fit into that very nicely. You're going to be looking to provide more value than just the single buff. The veil is crucial because it can't be locked, so it has to be removed. But it isn't as amazing and crazy as it sounds. I had a lot of people seeing this reveal comparing it to Hawker Smuggler in Squirtel saying Hawker Smuggler is so much worse. Completely disagree. While Hawker Smuggler doesn't have the veil, it's the same power, but two provisions more. Hawker Smuggler is buffing in hand and passively every turn, so it's buffing at least twice as much and considerably more than that because it continues to work as well when you've passed. This is an order, so it is a, an active engine, not a passive engine, effectively. But you're going to be looking to double the value of these buffs as much as possible. I'm a lion, how am I doubling the buffs? That doesn't make any sense. Well, you'll see soon with Sigismund Dijkstra when we get there. Yes, that's right, DJ Extra is back in Northern Realms. But also think of your dueling cards, things like Ansays. They effectively double the value of that buff because they keep the buff themselves and remove that somewhere else. So. You're going to be using it for things like that. You might decide to use it for cards that can be inspired to do that. Maybe even to reach some of those grace abilities later on. Ultimately, it's a four provision card, so it's effectively free in Gwent deck building terms. So you might just find it a very, very interesting. Curious card. I don't hate it at all. I'm, I'm interested to see where it fits longer term, but I think there is a place for it. This might be my favorite card. It's so, so fun. Northern Realms gets an additional Purify, and I love it. And I think people are underrating this card initially, and I think they're going to come to reevaluate this card. It is Redanian Secret Service. It is a human, it is an agent. One base power and six provisions. Unplayable, surely. <sighs> Zeal Order. Purify an allied unit. So yes, Northern Realm still has no faction-based active Purify to the other side of the board. We'll skip over that. However, you do not control a Redanian Secret Service. Whenever an allied unit gains a status, this card will get instantly summoned from your deck to its row. A couple of really interesting things with this. You can find multiple ways to summon this yourself. The next card we're going to look at being one of them, but several things will do it. Leader abilities like Shield Wall during your turn will do it. There are some Northern Realms cards that will apply effectively statuses. You can find ways to apply statuses for yourself as well. That is possible, particularly with Shields in Northern Realms. The next card is also a really nice bit of synergy with it, and we'll touch on it in a second. 
This is fantastic. Yes, it will jump out if your opponent gives you a status. So let's say you're facing Nilfgaard and occasionally, and this might surprise you, occasionally Nilfgaard run locks, even poison. I know, I know, it's, it seems unlikely. I know you're thinking Lionheart, that, that can't possibly be the case. Trust me, it is. This card will then jump out. Now, of course, that does give them the option to deal with the card, but it also means they have to deal with the card. A big difference. Effectively two threats in one turn that must be answered. I am of the opinion that this card at least one is going into most archetypes in Northern Realms. I would say the possible exception is the standard scenario Knights list, because there are many ways, think of Immortals being played. It's just going to pull itself out, but you don't really want to purify that. So you're not really going to want to run it in that list, but kind of any other Northern Realms list, I'm not sure why you wouldn't run at least one of these. They won't both pull out for a status because of the text, if you do not control Redanian Secret Service, of course. There are lots of interesting ways to make this work, but I really like this card. I've had a few people say that it's, it's either too expensive or... I, I disagree. I think at five, this would be scary how good it would be. Um, so I personally, I'm quite glad that it sits at six provisions. Maybe you could consider putting it to base power, but I think it's better to... Uh, to see how it performs first, because I have a feeling it's going to be a very commonly played card. Now, this one. Drakenborg. From Witcher 2, this is briefly mentioned as a prison for non-humans. Drakenborg is a brand new location card, Northern Realms, and this one makes me. As with all locations, it has resilience. Deploy. Summon a unit from your deck to this row. Lock it and remove the boost. Well, that sounds terrible. Well, firstly, I've just given a status. So, as we mentioned, that would pull the Redanian Secret Service if you happen to be running them. But, remove its boost. Now, we've already established that lots of lists in Northern Realms like to buff in deck. And we've seen the new bronze card that likes to do that as well. I'm going to pull a card out, and I'm going to remove its boost. Well, that means the Drakenborg keeps the boost. The order ability is boost an allied unit by zero, and increase the value by the amount of boost that was removed. Now you're thinking, okay, so I can boost something up super tall, and now I can hear you. You're frantically thinking, well, how, do, how am I finding ways to boost? Well, you to generator boosts, but it boosts randomly. Okay, all god. Offerings, they all boost, and of course the cards that we've just seen as well, the newly reformed Redanian Agent, they will both do that. Dandelion as well, things like that. And you're going, hmm, okay, I can probably get quite a bit of buff value. And I can pull that out. Ooh. And of course, this, unlike Melitali's Temple, it is not immune. It is targetable by Dwim Viandras. There is no devotion lock on this. So now you're thinking, okay, how could I build, and I'm, I'm curious to see how this deck ends up looking, how could I make the most out of that? Because we've already seen so much power and carryover from Erland, for example, as being untouchable and a lot of points. This could be even more, because I can keep replaying the order ability over and over and over again. I believe you can play five Dwim Viandras, potentially, over the course of a single game. And of course this survives multiple rounds as it is resilient between the rounds. It doesn't matter if the order is used or not. So you will have it for two rounds. That could be a lot of points, but it could be a lot more points than you think. Because our boy, Sigmund Dijkstra, human agent aristocrat. Yes, I can do a better DJ voice than that. No, I'm not going to, it's really late. Um, he is back, DJ Extra, that is a shout out to Ash Explores, who is greatly missed in Gwent, I can tell you, uh, as she coined the original version of this back in the day, DJ Extra, and it will sit forever. Sigmund's Dijkstra is a base power of 4 and a provision of 12. Okay, fine. Order, play a boosted unit from your deck. Sure. While in deck, whenever this unit receives a boost from an other ability, Boost the self by the same amount. Now, it seems confusing. 
So the easiest way I can explain this is it's reverse torque. Torque doubles boosts in hand, Siggy doubles the boost in deck. If I use my friend the Redanian agent to buff him by one, well, he's gonna buff by two. Yep. So every buff that our good friend Siggy here takes in deck is double the value. Which means every single one of those buffs that you're stacking in round one, ooh, they're worth double on all the cards you replay it. Now that sounds really scary. And it could be. And it could be. But there are some foibles to that strategy. Don't panic too much, okay? Because that list has no tempo in round one. When you look at it, if I'm playing you to generator, that's a zero point play. We've seen the way that list works, right? The list tends to lose round one on even most of the time quite comfortably. It's very susceptible to being bled as a result. Jean mentioned when he was revealing Sigmund Dijkstra, and also I believe this Redanian agent, in fact, that it's all well and good preparing for the next round, but you have to find a way to win this one sometimes. And that is something that is going to be an issue for this. It also really falls apart if Drakenborg gets answered. Well, you could heat wave it. I have a feeling some people will be including verification for a little while, and the whole list just falls apart to itself in a lot of situations. Does that mean these cards aren't good? No, it does not. This is going to find a place in quite a few different decks, not just for the value of this, but the fact that ultimately it's a tutor. If you pull out a Veiled unit, the lock is going to be redundant, and there are plenty of decent Veiled Northern Realms units you could be grabbing, for example, would be very, very interesting. It is nine provisions as well, the Drakenborg. So you've got to bear in mind it does fit into Golden Necklists. Okay, you could play a decent amount of synergy in a turn with Drakenborg on the board. If you think you're playing Royal Decree, you could use this. It could pull a defender. A well, lock makes no difference to a defender. I could also then use the ability with the boost. There's a lot of things you could be doing in a single turn. Ziggy, I think, is a great card. Some people thinking he's overcosted. I'm inclined to disagree initially just because in a list that's all for him, he could be a lot of points. His order ability itself will also pull another boosted unit. So he's effectively an engine and a tutor all in one go. In a short round three, if you don't play him this way with Drakenborg, he is just a lot of points. He could be terrifying in that situation. Very interesting. I'm not going to give star ratings or anything like that because here's the big thing, and I wish I'd said this at the beginning. Hmm. I'm smart enough to edit this in at the beginning. Probably not. If I did, good for me. Every time we get reveals, we have this wonderful notion that we know everything about these cards from what we see here. We are witnessing this in a vacuum. And we always do, and that's completely fine. We're judging these cards based on hypothetical synergies in a non-existent hypothetical meta. So, we currently know these four cards and nothing about any of the other factions, or how they will be built, or how they will respond, or what techs will need to exist, what from the current meta will still play, how answerable these things will be. How do I feel about Northern Realms overall? I'm not the biggest fan of uninteractive carryover strategy, and I haven't really liked a lot of Northern Realms archetypes in the last couple of years. That doesn't really change with this. Will I give it a go? Of course I will give it a go. Will I have decks for it day one? Yes, I've built it already. It's up here and I basically just told you what it is. Yes, we will definitely be trying it out to see how it performs. Even if it's good, do I think it will last the test of a whole meta? No. On ladder, I don't think it's going to be a big threat. In a ornament setting in a conquest format with the right lineup i think it could be very very good as an arc but remember we look at this in a vacuum it is okay to have an opinion on something that doesn't mean we've actually had our hands on it yet it has obviously gone through the ptr and been played around with it can theoretically be a lot of points that doesn't mean it will be obscene or good that's the beauty of it leak season is amazing enjoy it have fun with it because as we all know there's only one more after this. So take some joy in it. Overall, I think these cards are cool. Honestly, my favorite is the Redanian Secret Service. I'm loving it. I am so glad to see a little bit of different opportunities taken, some fun ways of building cards. And I think this one will be the one that stands the test of time for me. 
but I think the others are all pretty decent. I hope you agree. If you've got any thoughts on it, let me know. I'm curious to see what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you value the cards in the same way as me? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to be doing these for every single faction. It's taken a lot for me not to press the buttons. It has. I'm revealing myself a monster card on my Twitch channel. I won't lie to you. In fact, I'm going to, I'm going to tease you. I'm going to tease you. I am, and I'm going to go from least excited to most excited for the cards, faction by faction. I am least excited for Northern Realms. So all five factions that are still to come excite me more than that. And it's going to surprise you. Northern Realms least. Syndicate next is the one I'm least interested in after Northern Realms. Then, then it's tough. Then it's Scoia'tael, which is normally my favorite. Then it's Nilfgaard, which will blow you all out of the water, followed by Skelliger, and the one I am most hyped for, it's Monsters. That is a very first for me. And I get to reveal a Monsters card. It will be on Thursday, the 6th of April. If you miss it live on Twitch, there will be a whole video doing exactly this up on YouTube the same day for you guys to check out. I hope you've enjoyed this. It's a little bit different. It's obviously very condensed. I'll see you on the ladder. Thank you for joining me, friends. As always, it's been a pleasure. Good.